Hello, I'm Calvin Snape. Welcome to TV6's PM Magazine. Make A's on vacation. She returns on Monday. 30 years ago tomorrow, something new came to Knoxville. Not too many people remember when it first came to town. I wasn't even born yet. We tend to take it for granted nowadays, though. 30 years ago tomorrow, television first came to Knoxville. East Tennessee's first TV station went on the air as WROL-TV. We know it today as WATE-TV Channel 6. Tomorrow, October 1st, is a very special day as proclaimed by state and local civic leaders. More about that in just a minute. Right now, come with us as we step back into 30 years of history. We'll meet people long since gone but fondly remembered. And we'll find out what happened when East Tennessee's first TV station came to town. Television has touched our lives in many ways. Just as we remember television bringing us man's first steps on the moon, many older residents can still remember TV first coming to town. This is the story of one of those stations. But this story is special because 30 years ago tomorrow, East Tennessee's first television station, Channel 6, went on the air here in Knoxville. We've done a lot of research into the history of Channel 6, and thanks to the McClung Collection and the Knox County Public Library, we're going to share some of that information with you. As you know, television is people, the people who make up a community. So when television was ready to remember Knoxville, was Knoxville ready to remember television? Well, I was, I was pleased uh, when it came on there because you had uh, uh, so many things that we weren't getting at the time. Well, I remember that it was so snowy, you could hardly tell what was on it, but you'd still watch it every second that you could. For just a moment, return with us to the 1950s. Many communities surrounding Knoxville already had fledgling TV stations. WMCT in Memphis, WSM in Nashville, WSB and WAGA, both in Atlanta. We bought a TV back in about 1952, and we picked up the Atlanta station. I don't remember the call numbers. Television was growing so fast, the government couldn't handle all the applications, so it put a freeze on starting new TV stations. The freeze was lifted in the spring of 1953. One, two, three, go. A race has begun to see who would have the first TV station on the air in the hills of East Tennessee. Two stations in Knoxville, one station in Johnson City, and one in Chattanooga all want the honor. The station in Johnson City, WJHL-TV Channel 11, would have been the first had it not had problems getting its tower put up. It was a frustrating time for the station. Well, WROL-TV in Knoxville was ready, so the honor went to Channel 6. John Reese was the first station's first program director. John, what do you remember about the first night Channel 6 went on the air? The first I remember is that we were about three hours late getting on the air, and we got thousands of calls at the office. We did have a, a test pattern on the air, and we got thousands of calls. Most of them mentioned the fact the Indian was growing a beard and, <laughs> and things like that. This was the largest market in the, in the United States almost completely without television. And so therefore, people were very anxious. They, a lot of people had gone out and bought a set. So about nine, a little after we got on the air. And Almost immediately, East Tennessee's first TV station began changing. Five months after it went on the air, the call letters were changed from WROL-TV to WATE-TV. There was some thought uh, among some that uh, WATE spelled weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, and, and that that made it, meant it was a strong uh, influence in the community. Well, it also means W-A-I-T. <laughs> <laughs> so there was really no reason. I guess that's just the... It was just, uh, 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 they're just chosen from the available call letters, actually. It carries those call letters today. Back in the early days, Knoxville was fascinated with its first TV station. That fascination translated into viewers. And for local advertisers, viewers translated into money. Sponsors eagerly lined up to get their products on the air and out to potential buyers. One programming note, for the first three years, Channel 6 carried programs from both the NBC and ABC television networks. In 1956, it became NBC full-time. Going into the 1960s must have been fun. The network took care of you most of the time, but everything else from sponsor commercials to local shows had to be done live on camera. One of the first local shows featured a homemaker from Maryville. She would eventually become Knoxville's most watched TV personality. She's well remembered today. Speaking from her now summer home in Florida, Mary well, Starr remembers well the early days. When I started out with television, 
I realized that if I couldn't be comfortable and if I couldn't make the viewers comfortable, there was nothing there. So I said, I've got to laugh at myself if anything goes wrong because you, as you know, it was all live and anything could happen. So we laughed together and we established an empathy that was one of the most rewarding experiences of my entire life. Still bigger changes in store for Channel 6. After years of having the general offices downtown on Gay Street and the studio first on Sharps Ridge, then in this building on Broadway, WATE moved into the Greystone Mansion. Built in 1890, Greystone had been a union hall. It's now on the National Register of Historic Places. Also, the station was bought by the Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company in 1962. Into the late 60s, videotape came to Knoxville TV stations. It was now possible to tape those live shows and play them back later. Mike Thurman, who hosted the Popeye show before he became sports director, says his show was one of the earliest ones put on videotape. came on, we taped it on like Friday afternoon and played back on Saturday morning. Well, we used to talk to the kids and ask them different things. And I'll tell you something here, you'd like this little boy. We asked him, what do you like to do? And this kid said, I like to catch bugs. And I said, well, what do you do when you get a buggy? He said, I squish them. <laughs> you know, you got to stop and start all over because you're afraid another one's going to go out and get a dog and squish your dog. <laughs> the biggest change of the 1970s that affected local TV happened when Channel 6 switched from NBC to ABC. Now, a network switch like that hadn't happened in Knoxville since 1956. But to some viewers that didn't remember that much about ABC, this may have been the first time they'd seen it regularly in over 20 years. Into the 1980s go Channel 6, and still the changes. In the past 30 years, new equipment has replaced the old. Familiar local faces to Knoxvillians move on to bigger and better career opportunities. Who knows what lies in the next 30 years for Channel 6? No one knows for sure. But the future is here, right now. And East Tennessee's first television station has just passed the Big 3-0. Now, we want you to join us in the celebration of Channel 6's 30th anniversary. Tomorrow, October 1st, has been declared Channel 6 Day in Knoxville and Knox County. And in special proclamations, the governors of both Tennessee and Kentucky have proclaimed tomorrow Channel 6 Day in both states. Now, there will be a special awards ceremony tomorrow night at 6.30 at Saturday night on the town in the plaza level directly across from the Gateway Bookstore.